Hello, AP Chemistry. Welcome back. We're going to talk about titrations again today. We're going to do another case study today, but in this case, we're going to do a weak acid strong base uh, titration instead of doing a strong acid strong base titration. So before we look at a specific example, I want to um, kind of walk you through conceptually all the different situations you're going to see. So um, in the beginning of this titration, just like the other one, you're going to have a weak acid present. So I've kind of drawn the weak acid here um, so that you can see both parts of a weak acid. So you can see the hydrogen ion as well as the conjugate base that it is stuck together with. So hydrogen ion and the anion, right? Um, so in the beginning of this, we have the weak acid present, but unlike the strong acid, uh, who is there almost fully in terms of ions, the weak acid is present almost fully in terms of molecules. Remember the definition of a weak acid is that it's not going to dissociate very much as a super small Ka, it has a super small ratio of uh, products to reactants, which means the reaction's not going to go forward very much. Um, and only about one out of every thousand of these molecules are actually going to dissociate in solution. So I've drawn five molecules here. I'm not about to uh, draw 995 more, right? But you can imagine it. If I had a thousand of these molecules drawn across the screen, only one would actually dissociate in solution into the ions. Every, all the other ones would be left as molecules. And so if we think about the beginning of this titration where we have only weak acid present and we think about it graphically, um, remember this is going to be volume of our base added. Our base is NaOH and this is going to be pH. So at zero base added, where I have only weak acid present, um, I will have, and I will have a little bit of H plus ion floating around, but for every thousand molecules, I'm only gonna have one H plus ion, right? Now we do have lots and lots of molecules present. If you have a one molar solution of your weak acid. That means you have one mole inside one liter. So if you actually do have a full liter of your weak acid, then you have one mole of your weak acid present, right? Now one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, HA molecules, and one one thousandth of those molecules are going to dissociate. So do we have a measurable number of H plus floating around in our one liter? Yeah, we do, right? Because we have a, this like mind blowing number of molecules in a mole, right? We're going to have a measurable amount of molecules, but is it the same amount of hydrogen ions that's floating around in a strong acid solution? No, in a strong acid solution, you'd have all 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd uh, molecules splitting apart and forming H plus ions. So you'd have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd H plus ions floating around. Whereas in a weak acid, you only have about one one thousandth of that. Okay, so all that to say, if a strong acid's pH is here, then a weak acid's pH is probably gonna be more like here, right? Still gonna be acidic, maybe even not, not that high up, right? Still gonna be acidic, but it's going to be less acidic than the strong acid because there's less hydrogen ions present. Even if it's the same molarity, one molar strong acid versus one molar weak acid, your pH is going to be higher for the weak acid just because you have less stuff dissociate. And that comes back to the Ka. Remember that's measured by the Ka. The Ka of strong acid is large. The Ka of weak acid is small. 
And that's what it's communicating, that difference in how much H plus is actually floating around. Okay, so now that we know what our pH is going to be initially when there's just weak acid present, now because it's a titration, we're going to start to add strong acid to this. And because we're trying to add it in little by little by little to actually figure out how much is present, we just add a small amount of strong base to begin with. So I'm going to draw my strong base in a loud color. I feel like red is feeling loud today. Um, because strong bases and strong acids, strong species just dominate the solution. What happens when weak acids are there by themselves? Well, some dissociate, some don't until we hit that nice equilibrium, right? What happens when something strong is present? The strong thing reacts and reacts and reacts and, and reacts until something is gone, right? It's kind of intense. It's kind of in your face. It's going to react. It's going to drive the reaction until something is gone. Now, what does a strong base react with? It reacts with the strongest acid present. So you have a weak acid and you have water. What is it going to react with? It's going to react with the weak acid, right? So it's going to react with the weak acid until something is gone. It's an in-your-face kind of situation. Okay, so our strong acid will react with our weak base. These two things are going to come together to form water. Right? And then what are we left with? We're left with the anion and that was supposed to be orange, but you get the idea. Okay. So these the H plus and the OH minus react to form water. And then you have the sodium ion or the conjugate to the conjugate acid of the strong base floating around. You get the conjugated acid, acid of the weak base floating around. Now, why did I draw them separate like this instead of combining them? Because together they would make a soluble salt most of the time. I mean, if they don't, if you're dealing with something like the silver ion, for example, if you have like silver hydroxide or something like that, then, then you might be in a different story, but I don't know who deals with silver hydroxide. That'd be a very expensive, corrosive thing, right? Anyway, usually what you're going to be left with is a soluble salt and soluble salts are just going to fall apart completely in water. They're not going to float around together. They're going to float around separately. And so you have these two other things present instead of your uh, weak acid strong base, right? So our strong base gets completely used up. We don't have strong base floating around anymore because it drives the reaction to completion. And if you just add a little bit, then it is the thing that runs out first and you don't have it anymore. You still have your weak acid left, but now you have something else that is affecting your pH. You have a conjugate base. And so this weak acid conjugate base is going to find its own new equilibrium and the pH is going to rise. You have less of your weak acid present. You have a new weak base present. Your pH is going to rise slightly, right? And that's going to happen until you add enough of your strong base, right? Reacts pH rises slightly. You add more strong base, reacts, pH rises slightly. You add more strong base, it reacts, pH rises slightly. You add more uh, strong base, it reacts. All of a sudden, you don't have your weak acid present anymore. It's going to react, turn into water, sodium ion, conjugate base. It's going to react, turn into water, sodium ion, conjugate base. Same, turns into water, sodium ion, conjugate base, turns into water, sodium ion, conjugate base, right? Okay, so all of a sudden, you don't have any strong base 
or weak acid left. You have water, you have your sodium ion, and then you have your conjugate base. The only thing affecting pH right now is your conjugate base. So this is at our equivalence point. Our equivalence point is when we have added the same amount of weak acid and strong, strong base. Now this is different from strong acid, strong base as well. In strong acid, strong base, at this point, at the equivalence point, you have water, a useless acid, and a useless base, right? Both of your conjugates, when they come from strong things, are going to be useless. Well, not so in this case. The conjugate of sodium hydroxide will be useless, but the conjugate of your weak acid is going to be a weak base. It's going to be influencing pH. So the pH of your equivalence point will be different. If just water is present influencing the, B, the pH, your, your pH is going to be 7. Well, if in this case we have a weak acid present, our, our pH at our equivalence point is going to be above 7. Okay, so we have kind of four categories here that we've looked at so far. We have weak acid by itself going to float around and and establish an e equilibrium. We have a strong acid added in there. It's going to go to completion. Sorry, strong base. It's going to go to completion. So this one's just equilibrium. This one's going to be to completion. And then you're left with the weak acid, weak base, and then it's going to go to equilibrium. So those are going to be two-step problems. This middle part where we just have the weak base present, it's going to have to find its own equilibrium. And now at this point, if I add in more of my strong base, that strong base is going to dissociate into Na plus and OH minus. It has nothing more to react with. It's not going to react with weak acid because we're out of it. It's not going to react with the weak base because bases don't react with bases, right? It's going to dissociate into Na plus and OH minus. And the only thing left to influence pH is that OH minus. Your pH, in this case, is going to spike. Now you're accumulating hydroxides. The more base you add, you're just accumulating hydroxide, accumulating hydroxide, accumulating hydroxide. Your pH is going to spike initially. And then as you add more hydroxide, it'll probably like plateau eventually. But at this point in time, you have only strong base present because you've used up all your weak base. And this is just going to go to completion. All right. So we kind of, again, see these four different stages. And at each stage, you really have to evaluate what's present, what will react, after it reacts, what will be left? What will it do then? And all four are going to act slightly differently. So you really have to be thinking through the context here. Okay, now with all of this said, let's look at our actual uh, case study here. Okay, just like our other case study, I'm going to post a video of me working through this math. I'm also going to post um, the math worked out on paper. So you can um, watch this video to check your work. You can look at the piece of paper to check your work, whatever works for you. However, here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you to try this first before you look at answers. You you need to do point A, get all the way to an answer, box your answer, and then check your work. Do not look at the work as you go. That will give you a really false sense of security because you will be looking at someone else's work and saying, I understand what they're doing. I could have done that. That's exactly what I would have done, right? And that is not the same as starting going start to finish by yourself with only a periodic table and a calculator to help you. 
right? You need to prove to yourself that you can go start to finish and get an answer, or you can get stuck in the middle and ask a question. So do not follow along. Do it and then check your answers. Okay, so again, here's the video part. If you want to go use the sheet of paper where it's worked out on paper, you're welcome to do that instead. Okay, pause the video. Try it. Here we go. Point A, so no NaOH is added. I have, the only thing I have in solution is my weak acid. My weak acid is going to um, mostly stay together. So most of what I have is a molecule. Now, what will this molecule react with? The only thing it has to react with is water. And so in this reaction, we're gonna set up our weak acid, HC2H3O2 along with our water. And we're gonna form the hydronium ion and then acetate is left over. So will this happen to a great extent? No, it will not. My Ka is very small. Most of what I'll be left with is reactants with a little bit of products. Okay, uh, now I have 50 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution. So I do have molarity. I can use the molarity as long as I'm not adding any other volume from another source. Because if I'm adding volume from another source, my molarity is gonna change. Am I adding volume from another source? No, I am not. So I can just use my molarity. My change, I don't know, it's a weak acid. I don't know what my change will be. I have to figure it out. But I do not know that my Q is zero. And so it has to get bigger in order to get to equilibrium. So this is going to a true equilibrium, 0.1 minus X, X, X. And then I can plug into my K A equation, X times X over 0.1 minus X. I can ignore X's that are being added or subtracted. And now I solve for X. X equals 0.00134. Take the ne negative log of that. And my pH is 2.87. Okay, uh, so when there's only weak acid present, I just have a very normal um, weak acid dissociation reaction. Okay, let's look at the next point, point B. Now I have sodium hydroxide that's been added and I have to take that into account. So what's the reaction that's going to happen? I have weak acid present. Let's make a list of things we have present. C, H2, HC2, H3O2. I also have Na plus and OH minus. Okay, so uh, my weak acid's not gonna fall apart because it's weak. My strong acid will fall apart because it's strong. Um, and the thing that will affect the pH the most, the strongest driver in this case is gonna be my strong base. It's going to react until something is gone. So what is it going to react with? What's my strong base going to react with? My strong base will react with the strongest acid that's present, which is my weak acid. So I need a different reaction. I need a reaction between my strong base my weak acid and that is going to form water and leave a conjugate base. Now it will also leave sodium. Do I care about sodium? Will it affect the pH? Because remember it's pH that I'm looking at. It's pH that I care about. Nope, it won't. Conjugates of strong things are weaker than water. So it won't affect my pH, so I can just ignore it. So now I need to think about initial amounts. Okay, so uh, I do have an initial volume and molarity of both of them, but I'm going to combine 
the volumes. And so my total volume for both of them is going to change. So I need to recalculate a new molarity once I have combined the volume. So let's do that for hydroxide. I have a 0.1 molar, so that's moles per liter, times 10 milliliters, so 0.01 liters. That's going to give me moles, 0.001 moles. I have 0.001 moles of hydroxide present. Now, what's my total volume going to be? It's 10 plus 50, so 60 milliliters, so 0.06 liters. So that is a initial molarity of 0 0.0167 molar for my NaOH. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for my weak acid. So I have 0 0.1 molar, 0 0.1 moles per liter, and I have 50 milliliters of that, so 0.05 liters. So how many moles do I have? I have 0 0.0. 0.5 moles, and I'm going to divide it by the total volume once they've been combined, so 0 0.06 liters. So that's going to give me 0 0.083 molar as an initial molarity. Okay, zero water. Water I can ignore anyway because it's a liquid. It's not going to affect my K. Uh, acetate, I start with none of it. Okay, now change. Is my change, am I going to equilibrium or to completion? Well, I have something strong present, I'm going to go to completion. So it's going to react until something's gone. The thing I have less of is my base. So I have in the end, once it has swung it to completion, I have none of this left. Point. 0.0167. I'm going to have 0 0.066 of my acetic acid left and plus 0 0.0167 over here, 0 0.0167. Okay. So at this point in time, my strong base has driven, driven, driven to completion until something is gone. Just so happens that I've just added a little bit of sodium hydroxide. And so the thing that runs out is the actual sodium hydroxide. So it has driven it all the way to one side. I'm left with weak acid and weak base. So what will weak acid and weak base do uh, in the presence of one another? Well, if they're conjugates, they will find an equilibrium, right? If they are not conjugates, they'll react together. So these are conjugates. They're going to find an equilibrium. Now, um, you do need a new reaction. That equilibrium is not going to fit the same reaction that we have above. So a new reaction, since we have a Ka, we're going to write it in terms of our acid, HC2H3O2, reacting with water. So we have H3O plus plus C2H3O2 minus. We can fill in initial amounts. We've already found those, 0 0.066 molar. It's already in molarity, 0 0.0167. I have no additional liquid volume coming in here, so I don't have to worry about that, that at all. Okay, so at initial change equilibrium. Now, uh, this is going to hit equilibrium because I have two weak things present. What's the change? I don't know. Um, so if you use an ice chart, your change is going to be an X. But you have a weak acid and a weak base present. You don't have to use an ice chart here. You can also use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. What's the pH when just weak acid and its conjugate base are present? Well, it's this. So you can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and calculate a pH, or you can use the ice chart that we are probably comfortable with at this point in time. And plug into a K equation. 
Either way, you should get the exact same answer. All right, my PK, so my KA is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. My PKA is always going to be the same because my KA is not changing. So I'm just going to write it up here at the top so that I have it as a reference. All right. So if I do this all, it's going to, my pH is going to end up being 4.14. All right, so notice we've added a little bit of hydroxide. The hydroxide has reacted completely until the hydroxide's gone. I was left with my weak acid, less of my weak acid, but still left with my weak acid and then some additional conjugate base. And then that stuff swung back to an equilibrium and I found a pH. Now, does my pH make sense? It's a little bit higher than the last one. Um, yeah, it should be higher because I added base, so that makes sense. Now um, we get to repeat this for point C. All right, rather than erasing everything, I'm just going to erase the stuff that changes. Okay, so at point C, I have 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So my, uh, my volume of base changes, which is going to change the moles that I have. My total volume also changes. My moles of acid are not going to change, so I'll leave those. And then I'm going to get a new ice chart down here. And then we'll have to see what we are left with in the end but at least this ratio is gonna change. Okay, so let's see what we're left with. <clears throat> 25 milliliters of NaOH, 0.025. So that means my total molarity is 75 milliliters, 0 0.075, 0 0.075. So let's see what I get. So this is 0 0.0025 and this is 0 0.0333. Now as I'm doing this um, on my calculator, I never clear my calculator. I always hit second answer, second answer, second answer. So although I write 0 0.0333, I'm not actually going to clear my calculator um, because as you clear your calculator, basically what you're doing is rounding off multiple times and you're going to move farther and farther away from an actual answer. So um, if possible, hit second answer on your calculator and don't actually clear it. 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.075 is 0 0.0667. So my base is still the least that I have. I have none of my base left. And this is going to be the same. 0 0.033 three repeating plus 0 0.0333 plus 0 0.0333. Okay, so I added a little bit of base. The base drove the reaction to completion. And now my weak acid, weak base are going to swing back to equilibrium. 0 0.0333, 0 0.0333. You can use the ice chart at this point in time since you just have weak things left your change would be an X, right? Or you can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Okay, now this is an interesting point because at this point in our titration, we have this term 
which is log of one. We have the same concentration of our weak acid and our weak base. Log of one is zero. And so this term kind of drops off and my pH is equal to my pKa. 4.74. Okay, this is a special point on your graph that gets referred to as the halfway point. It's halfway between your where your initial amounts and your equivalence point. You've added half the base that you need to in order to get to your equivalence point. Your acid has half reacted right? It's the halfway point. And at the halfway point, your pH is going to equal your pKa because weak acid over weak base should be the same. That's a one. Log of one is zero. Drops out of the henderson hasselbalch equation. Um, so this is an important point. It is referred to as a halfway point by the college board. It will show up on your test like this. Um, and it's a nice point because you really don't have to do math. Uh, if you recognize that you're at the halfway point, you don't have to do any of this math. You can just say, oh, I know what my pH is. It's my pKa, and that's it. Okay, so now let's go beyond the halfway point to point D, where we add 40 milliliters of NaOH. Okay, so that's going to change all of this stuff in purple up here, and this stuff down below. All right, so I have 40 milliliters, 0.04. Oh, that's going to leave me at 0.004 over my total volume, which is 40 plus 50, so 0 0.09. 0 0.09. So 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.09 is... 0.04 for repeating, 0.05 divided by 0.09, that should be a 9, is going to equal 0.555 repeating. My base is still going to run out first. There should be an O there. Okay, plus 0 0.0444. No base left. Okay, so 0 0.0111 one repeating. You know, 0444. Then I carry that down into my initial amounts because now I just have my weak acid, weak base left. They're going to go to equilibrium, 0 0.0444 over 0 0.0111. Whew. Okay, and that's log. So if you're using the ice chart, your change is going to be an X because you have weak acid, weak base present. So you don't know what that change is going to be. You have to figure out what that change is going to be. If you're using Henderson Hasselbach, you just plug it in. Okay. So my pH is going to equal, I'm going to put it over here, pH is going to equal 5.34. So my pH has gone up, gone up, gone up, which is good. That's reasonable. And we're not quite to the equivalence point yet. Okay, so uh, point E, here we go. Let's erase anything affected by the volume increase of the strong base. Okay, now I have 50 milliliters that's being added of my strong base. So I have a total of 100 milliliters. So 0.05 of my base, 0 
0.05 of my base over 0.1 over 0.1, well, no matter what that is, it's going to be the same. So 0 0.05, 0 0.05, they're going to run out at the same time. So what would we call this point? We would call it an equivalence point. Now, um, the only thing I have left is my conjugate base. Now, will it affect pH? Yes, it will. What will it react with? It'll react with water. So I can't use this stuff that I have here at the bottom anymore. I can't use this reaction because I don't have everything in this reaction. I don't have a weak acid reacting with water anymore. I actually have a weak base reacting with water. So I need a different equation. Okay, let's write an equation where we have our species present. So weak base, C2H3O2 minus, it's going to react with the other strongest thing, the strongest acid that's present. Now I don't have any of my weak acid present. The conjugate of my strong base is weaker than water. So my, weak, my strongest acid I have present is water. Okay, so I'm gonna get HC2H3O2 and hydroxide. Okay, so I have 0.05 of this. Can I use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation? No, I cannot because I don't have any weak acid present. Again, I can ignore water because it's a liquid. It's not going to affect my K equation. Do I know my change? No, I do not. That's going to be an X. So 0.05 minus X, X, X. So my K here is going to be my KB, not my KA, because it's a weak base reaction. It's not an acid reaction. So my KB is going to equal my KW over my KA. I need to calculate that, and that will equal X times X over 0.05 minus X. I can ignore anything added or subtracted because it won't significantly affect my equation. And here I am. Okay, so now I need to calculate my KB and solve for X. All right, my KB is going to be 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10th. My X is going to be 5.27 times 10 to the negative 6. My pOH then, so X here is the concentration of OH minus, so negative log of that is going to be my pOH, which is 5.27, 5.28. So 14 minus that is my pH, which is going to be... pH is going to be 8.72. That's my pH. Okay, so this is my equivalence point. This is the point where the amount of acid that's been added is equal to the amount of base that's been added. The amount of acid in my solution is equal to the amount of base that has been added. It's an equivalence point. So the base perfectly uh, neutralizes the acid and I'm only left with salts left, but the salt happens to have an anion in there that is a weak base. And so my pH at my equivalence point in this case is not seven. My pH is dependent on that weak base. So it's a slightly basic pH. It's a slightly high pH. So that makes sense. That is a good place to be. All right, let's do point F. What happens after we neutralize all our weak acid and then add a little bit more sodium hydroxide? Let's find out. All right, I've added 60 milliliters, so 0.06 will give me 0.006 moles of my base. Now my total volume is 60 plus 50, so it's a 
110.11 liters. 0.11. All right, let's do a little math there and figure out what our initial molarities are. 0 0.006 divided by 0 0.11 is 0 0.054. 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.11 is going to be 0 0.04545. All right, so the thing that's going to run out first is my weak acid. So I have no weak acid left. And my change, my base is going to be 0 0.00909. Okay, so at this point in time, let's look at what we're left with and what's going to affect pH. I'm left with strong base. I have sodium hydroxide present. I'm also uh, left with weak base. So I'm left with two bases. Now what's going to react together? Will bases react with a base? No, that's not going to happen. They're both going to dissociate um, in water or... Uh, the weak base in this case is going to react with water, right, to form hydroxide. But the only hydroxide that matters is the hydroxide from the strong base. And so I can ignore any hydroxide that's produced from the weak base because it's going to be such a small amount. It's not going to affect the significant figures when compared to the base that is uh, the hydroxide that's produced from our strong base. And so I need a different reaction. <laughs> the thing that's driving this reaction is our strong base and the strong base is going to drive reaction um, until nothing, like nothing's there to react with it. So we don't have to drive reaction until something's gone. We're just going to drive the reaction. So the pH is going to de depend on the NaOH. The NaOH is going to dissociate in water, right? So if we, that's a minus, if we have 0 0.00909 moles, molar NaOH initially, it's going to dissociate completely, 0.00909 plus 0 0.00909 plus 0 0.00909. Now, you, don't, you guys don't actually have to write this out. Um, you can just know that the amount of hydroxide initially is the same as the amount of hydroxide once it all dissociates, right? The, or sorry, the amount of strong base initially is the same as the amount of hydroxide once it all dissociates. So you can just take that and plug it into negative log and get a POH, negative log 0 0.00909. You can tell that I'm getting tired of writing that same number. Okay, so we're going to take the negative log of this, get a pOH, which is 2.04. Subtract that from 14. Ugh. Which is 11.96. So the pH at this point, at point F, is 11.96. Six. Pretty big jump, but at this point in time, we're accumulating hydroxide. We would um, probably predict that once we start to accumulate hydroxide, we're going to see a pretty big jump. Now, what happens between point F and point G? What happens once you have accumulated some hydroxide and you add more? Let's find out, shall we? One more. Uh, calculation here. So our new total volume is going to be 75 plus the 50. There we go. I think we got it all erased. Let's do this in pink, shall we? Okay, so we have point 
O seven five for our hydroxide. Seventy five plus fifty is one twenty five. So point one two five as our total volume. So initial amounts. This is going to be point o o seven five divided by point one two five is point o six. We know 05 divided by 0.125 is 0.04. My acid's going to run out first. I have no acid. I have 0.02 of my base and 0.04 of my weak base. My strong base is going to drive this reaction. It's going to determine the pH. The weak base won't even matter in light of the strong base. And so my hydroxide... My, I have 0.02 of my sodium hydroxide. You know that's all going to dissociate into ion. So I take my negative log of 0.02, which is 1.698. I subtract that from 14, and I get a pH at point G write this in a different color of 12.3. Whoo! We did it. We did this whole case study. Now, uh, before we get too excited, point F to point G, notice the pH doesn't, doesn't jump as much as it did between point E and point F. Same, a little bit more. Actually, a little bit more base has been added between F and and G, but the pH didn't change as much, right? Once we have hydroxide accumulated, adding more hydroxide isn't going to um, add a whole lot. That's why at the end of that graph, it's just going to kind of plateau a little bit. The pH isn't going to keep spiking. The pH is eventually going to plateau. So um, if you graphed this as we went along, you should see a distinctive curve. If you didn't graph this as we went along, you should do that now. Um, notice our pH again starts a little bit higher because it's a weak acid, not a strong base. And then it goes up a little bit, goes straight up for the equivalence point, and then goes up and plateaus for, the, um, for that end where we add base. A lot of different math. The math changes through the problem, um, but it's because of the context, right? So it is worth at this point in time sitting down and thinking about those four areas on the graph and how what is present there, what, what kind of reactions will happen, what kind of math you'll have to deal with, just like we did in the beginning. So weak acid there by itself, weak acid with a little bit of strong base added, uh, the point where weak acid equals strong base, and then the point where we just keep adding strong base. So think through those areas. What does it look like in terms of molecules? What does it look like in terms of math? What does it look like graphically? Uh, and it's really, it's really healthy to have to, to force yourself into dividing up those situations. All right. Congratulations. You did it. You did all the math. It's a lot of math. When we come back together, we're going to look a little bit more co closely at these graphs. Um, and then we'll keep going from there. So let me know what questions you have. Woo! I'll see you in class.